think I'm all good at Tim except the password. being 5 p.m. Uh, I'll uh, call this uh, second day of our budget retreat meeting uh, to order um, and I'll ask the secretary to please call the roll. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Meyer. Here. Commissioner Musich. Present. Commissioner Bourne. Commissioner Severson. I just got a note he's running a few minutes late. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Uh, present. Vice President Vita. Present. President Kogel. Here. I'm going to go through the uh, uh, um, roster one more time. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Bourne. Commissioner Severson. Commissioner French. President Kogel, you, you have a quorum. Thank you, Secretary Ringgold. I do know, uh, in addition to Commissioner Steverson, that Commissioner Bourne mentioned he would be a few minutes late. Um, so we will um, have them join when they join. Um, at this point, uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda for the night, noting that uh, the agenda has been uh, amended to uh, add a discussion uh, at 515 regarding general fund excess fund balance. Um, do I have a motion? So move a second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll on the agenda. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Meyer. All right. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Bourne. Commissioner Severson. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Kogil. Aye. You have five ayes, four absent. Uh, the agenda carries. Um, at this point, uh, I will in a moment just turn it over to the superintendent. Uh, thank all commissioners who are here for attending on this second day of our budget retreat. Uh, we learned a lot yesterday, got a lot of information, and I'm hopeful that uh, folks can weigh in and provide some guidance um, on our subject areas this evening um, as we uh, move into uh, our budgeting process, uh, especially given the fact that we do have a meeting with uh, the mayor on Monday. It'll be critical that we we get some some feedback. So just want to note that to commissioners, um, and thank you all for being here virtually on this beautiful day. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to the superintendent um, to kick us off. Superintendent Bangora. Thank you, President Cogill and commissioners, and and absolutely welcome this meeting uh, is being recorded. to tonight. Um, it is a beautiful day out. I have a great view of uh, the amazing weather, but uh, hopefully uh, I look forward to the meeting today. I look forward to our discussion and getting the input from um, all of the commissioners, all of you uh, on, the, on this budget for 2021. Um, 
I, I wanted to again welcome you and um, and a reminder that and hope that you attained uh, we, t- we obtained the board input um, as we begin to plan for the 2021 budget process. So again, welcome. Uh, next slide, please. So um, Director Weissman will start uh, the evening off with really a conversation about the board adopted 2020 uh, budget framework and she will provide an update um, on the progress we have made to this point. So I will turn this over to Director Weissman. Good evening, President Cogill and Commissioners. I wanted to spend just a little bit of time uh, reminding the board about the 2020 budget framework that was adopted by resolution on April 22nd and provide you an update uh, to give you some context um, of where we're at and why I'm bringing forward the general fund fund balance um, allocation conversation. So again, The 2020 budget framework is really a staged approach uh, to respond to the ever-changing conditions of 2020 based on uh, the COVID, the coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, as well as the stay-at-home orders, closures and cancellations of buildings. So again, stage one uh, was our immediate actions that we took Um, took and those were all implemented on April 3rd. So then we are currently in phase two. We're still reacting to the continued changes and directives that we are receiving um, from the governor in the state of Minnesota. Uh, So our stage two item our modification of revenue estimates. Um, We are continually updating those and uh, all of those items are in process or ongoing. We of course are modifying our programs and services to be held virtually or uh, to not violate social distancing requirements. We are looking at uh, everything that came out yesterday so that we can start providing um, programs and services uh, to our communities. So that is in process. We are continuing to look for state and federal relief. That's ongoing where we have um, started the process to apply for FEMA relief. We're looking at other relief that um, may become available Uh, through the state or through the city or through the county. Then item two, determine the appropriate level of fund balance. Uh, We spoke about the need to um, have within our fund balance at least one to two million dollars for emergency purposes as we enter storm season to make sure that we're able to respond to uh, um, a storm event. And we're starting to look at um, what type of fund balance we would want to be able to have and remain in fund balance as we move into 2021. So item B is the conversation around the general fund one-time fund balance authorization. So these are all board authorizations and I have started to have the conversation with the board about what those items are, what the remaining balances are, and have a conversation with um, the board around returning uh, some of those funds to the fund balance in order to be used for current operating purposes. So item three is the internal loan repayment. Uh, So those have all been um, loan repayments and transfers, those all have been completed. They have been put on hold um, based on the superintendent's authority and I will be bringing resolutions to the board to confirm those in June. And then number four 
is the capital rehabilitation projects. Um, the enterprise fund, we are continuing to look at the capital projects in that fund and determining which ones can be delayed or realigned. Uh, you completed the realignment of the um, neighborhood park VIP with the resolution that you adopted on May 6th. And we are in the process of looking at op operations and maintenance lottery and LUA funding. And we will be bringing forward a resolution to the board to consider in June for those items. So there were, um, there were a couple of things that I have heard um, consistently from this board. I've heard that um, we wanted to ensure that we were looking at every possible um, item. Uh, we wanted so that we uh, would not be impacting personnel costs. Um, so we wanted to look at contractual services. We wanted to look at our um, fund balances. We wanted to look everywhere. So kind of leave no stone unturned. Uh, so that is the process that we have been going through for 2020. Um, a wage freeze for all full-time and part-time um, employees is under consideration. Uh, so that is on the table, but it has not been enacted. The inactivation of provisional employees who do not have work assignments, that has begun. Employees have, um, provisional employees have been placed on layoff status. Um, to be called back when work becomes available. We have called back um, some of those employees already to, um, to work in the golf operations. Um, and so that, um, that process is, is working. And then we have implemented a voluntary budgetary leave that um, I'm calling it a first request that has been completed and employees have submitted and been approved for budgetary leave. They have donated 8,312 hours, um, which is going to save over $300,000 in 2020. So we are very appreciative of the employees who voluntarily um, put in budgetary leave. Next slide. So then stage three was our economic recession, our budget development and financial planning. So for 2020, we have begun this process. Uh, we began the process when we adopted the budget framework and we will continue uh, refining and looking at 2020 and working on 2020 monthly as we provide financial status updates to the board and further financial discussions um, monthly at, uh, at the board meeting. And then finally, number two is the 2021 annual budget, which this process has started and tonight is a big piece of that for information gathering. Uh, so our budget retreats and the draft 2021 budget framework will help guide us um, as we begin our conversations around the 2021 budget. So with that, I'll just open it up if there's any questions on the 2020 budget framework. Are there any from commissioners? Uh, if you could use the raise hand feature are there any questions from commissioners about the budget framework, um, which is precipitating our uh, next consideration around uh, returning excess fund balance? Any questions? Um, this is maybe in, an, in another subject area as well, but you mentioned that the wage freeze has not begun yet. Uh, why has the wage freeze not begun? So President um, Cogill and commissioners, uh, a wage freeze is an involved process that would require um, union negotiations um, as well as communication with the board. So um, if 
the superintendent wants to add to that. Uh, President, President Cogill and commissioners, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, this is something that we are now exploring. We want to, um, I know we were aligning ourselves, we were looking at what the city was doing and uh, we are now uh, into that discussion on um, uh, the next steps towards a wage freeze. I think a lot of this was also looking at our current state and looking at our uh, projections um, in budget and making the best decision for the organization. Um, and so I believe that um, a wage freeze is something that we are now um, looking uh, at and, and uh, we'll make a decision on, on the next steps. Is, is there a timeline for that or is what, what exactly precipitated, what's, what's triggering that? Is it just that the city has started something or? President Cogill and commissioners, uh, what it is I think for us is that we, as we're looking at the numbers and looking at our budget, uh, going forward, we were um, really working through the budget process and seeing where our numbers would be lying and what the um, where the what the total would be at the end of the year or projecting out um, what would be the budget looking forward to 2020 and how it would impact the organization. So as we we're going through our numbers and looking at them, I think that um, we're clear more clear about the numbers and what we need to do to move forward and what would be the best decision for the organization for, for not only our uh, employees, but um, uh, what the best decision would be for, um, uh, for budget impact. And I think the wage freeze is an option that's out there based on the numbers that we're seeing in the budget currently. Okay. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, Commissioner Musich. Thank you for that uh, answer. Superintendent Bangora, are we also talking, since we are going through the motions of figuring out how um, wage freezes will work in 2020, are we also talking about wage freezes for 2021 as well with our union staff and other, um, other partners in negotiating a wage so that we can ensure that we're able to perpetuate that uh, as we understand more and more about coronavirus and with the WHO saying that they expect this virus to be endemic at this point. Um, I think it behooves us to plan in that way for 2021. So could you elaborate on that piece of, of the exploration of wage freezes as well, please? Sure. President, President Cogill, Commissioner Musich, yes, we are also looking at uh, not only 2020, but 2021. Okay. Is, um, yes. So it's both years that, that the conversation is being had for. Yes. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Reese. Yes. Appreciate the clarification. That was my only question. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Musich. I'm not seeing any other uh, hands raised. Um, and I don't have any right. questions at this time. So uh, we can move on to the fund balance allocation. Uh, Superintendent and Director Wiseman. Yes, thank you, President Cogill and commissioners. So uh, we know that uh, as we were discussing yesterday, commissioners were asking that this conversation uh, be moved to this evening uh, to give really a uh, chance to consider the requests and to move the general fund excess balance or excess fund balance allocation uh, back into the fund balance to be used for the 2020 uh, operations so um, it is, uh, to say it is really um, not only myself, but Director Weissman's recommendation that the board strongly consider uh, moving these items uh, back into the fund balance uh, to fund the current year operations. And as we look forward at the numbers, you will kind of see what the impact will be for our, our, um, for our, uh, our, our, year, end, our year operations. So uh, with that, um, I'm gonna now turn this over to uh, Director Weissman. So for the general fund excess fund balance allocations, uh, you received this document yesterday. I walked you through it. So at this point, um, I am open for questions and your thoughts and input around what, if any of these items and what items you would be comfortable moving back into general fund fund balance.
Uh, all right, commissioners, uh, we have uh, Commissioner Musich first. Thank you very much, President Kogel. Uh, so I just have a few questions about what's being requested here for the comprehensive plan. The remaining balance that we're sending back is, is that allowing this work to continue through this year um, and we're just scaling back some of the work or can someone elaborate on uh, what impact this will have on the comprehensive plan planning? President Kogel, Commissioner Musich, to, to date, most of the comprehensive planning work has been done using the internal resources of staff. Okay. We have engaged um, some outside consultants and we have uh, a youth design team that's been working and our ability to continue funding that exercise uh, might be um, impaired if these funds were removed from the project budget. Okay, so if we send this $48,000 back to the general fund, we may no longer be able to continue the youth engagement so and planning? It would be the youth engagement and then some of the community connectors that um, we um, would continue to use as we move through the process. Okay, and have the community connectors been notified that they have funding to do that, the work that they're planning on doing already, or have they not yet been notified? Some of the work has already been um, occurring. Some of the work was early on trying to orchestrate um, new methods of reaching out to the, the community. Some of that work happened in 2019, um, but as we uh, put together policies and seek um, ways of communicating back, I think we'd be re-engaging the community connectors to help us do that. Okay, so this is, this. it would be, <laughs> the people that have already provided us services have already been paid, is that correct? Cor um, President Koga, Commissioner Musich, yes, that's correct, but we had intended to continue to engage them to continue, to continue their work through the term of the conference. Okay. So there would be more work that they would do for us. Okay, thank you for the clarification there. Uh, the tree preservation coordinator remaining balance, that's the savings that we're seeing because we did not hire that person um, earlier in the year. We hired them a little bit later, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. And then um, if we do have an aquatic invasive species, discovery in one of our lakes that we need to respond to very quickly. Do we believe that we're able to do that work underneath our current budget for the environmental operations team? Uh, President Colville, Commissioner Muse, this is, uh, so this is Superintendent Barrick. And yes, we, um, we had that conversation in the past. We've used a uh, very uh, nominal dollar amounts and we've had a couple of fines, so we're com we're comfortable with that. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'm sad to see we're not we would potentially not be able to do the outreach coordinator for forestry. It's something that I feel is so incredibly important for us to do, particularly as we see the need to start scaling back expenses uh, related to operations. So uh, while I understand that this year is probably not the best year to try to launch a new volunteer coordination effort. I really hope my colleagues will be supportive of keeping or adding that to the budget um, for 2021. Uh, the last question I had was about the Conservation Corps crews. Uh, is the Conservation Corps um, on board with us not utilizing these funds in this year or are we prohibiting them from hiring these two crews by reallocating balances. President Kogel and Commissioner Musich, this is a 2020 transfer of um, fund, or this is a fund balance transfer to fund crews that would be hired in 2021. So it's not crews that are being hired this year. Okay. It's to set it's aside money for crews. crews that would be hired in 2021. Okay. Thank you for those clarifications. I appreciate it. Those are my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Forney. Um, thank you, President Kalko. Um, 
first of all, I thank staff for um, going through these details and finding these um, potential um, allocations that we can make. Um, I'm supportive of all of them. Uh, the comprehensive plan, though, is probably the one I have the greatest um, uh, desire to continue. Um, so that would be the one thing that I would um, uh, prefer to keep and um, and complete that plan. I think that um, that's very critical for us to stay on task. That um, uh, all of the things are are critical, but I think uh, that's the one that um, I would advocate to keep. Otherwise, I'm in favor of the resolution um, to bring it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Forney. Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, President Cogill. I'll just uh, expand a little bit on what I was saying yesterday and maybe segue into a question or alternatives. But a lot of the things on this list are exactly the things we should be doing right now. Um, I, I, it does make sense to me with the forestry outreach coordinator, an employee that's not hired is probably an employee that we don't want to bring on right now. Um, I'm I'm trusting the superintendent that um, he will chase the non-realized funding from the city of Minneapolis for the tree preservation coordinator like a dog after a bone. And this might be the first year in a number of years that the city has um, fulfilled their promise on that. I'm hopeful that will happen. Um, but a lot of these are the things that, again, like an ordinance review, a cultural training, language access plan, while so many of us are working virtually, those are the type of things we should be investing in right now. Uh, the Conservation Corps in 2021, uh, FDR created the Conservation Corps to pull us, to help pull us out of the Great Depression. Uh, 2021 is when we're going to see a huge uptick in needs for uh, constructive engagement of young adults and putting them on career pathways. Um, and that funding is funding that has never materialized but has always been promised um and these are all things we should be doing right now and, and that really I, I keep coming back to the the question where it sounds like we have in effect hundreds of fewer people on the front lines right now being managed and supervised and coordinated by the same number of people that is required to supervise, manage, and coordinate a larger workforce. So I, I'm just, I, I'm hopeful that before we start looking at, uh, before we start looking at some things that we have a critical need for, we really start looking at how many people are managing how many people at, at this point. And that's a really difficult conversation to have because those are real human beings. Um, but I think we owe it to the taxpayers of Minneapolis to make sure that our system is lean. And it's, it, it's hard for me to justify right now sending hundreds of people that carry chainsaws, lawnmowers, clipboards for coaches, sending all those folks home, but having the same dollar amount dedicated towards administration and supervision. Um, that's just really hard for me to reconcile. So I don't know if there's anything on this general fund excess balance return that I would support unless I see that coupled with uh, some reductions in supervision and management reflective of a smaller workforce. Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Are there any other comments uh, regarding the excess fund balance allocations? Any other comments from folks? Any other comments? Hearing none. Um, Oh, Commissioner, uh, Vice President Vita. Um, Thank you, President Cogill. Um, I, I just had a comment um, after Commissioner Bourne's statement about, uh, you know, certain staff being a little bit more necessary than 
um, management. And I, I just think now that roles and responsibilities at the park board have changed since COVID-19. And um, what I'm finding is that uh, manager do, managers are doing a lot more of the provisional staff, the, a lot more of the work that provisional staff used to do. So I don't want us to, you know, start these conversations out by thinking of ways to eliminate or, you know, like uh, valuing one job more than the other. I would appreciate us having conversations that are more in the lines of how can we maintain um, the workforce that we have right now, including everyone, um, instead of uh, thinking of it in terms of eliminating jobs or some people's jobs may be more important uh, than other folks' jobs. Thank you, Vice President. Uh, Director Wiseman, you have your hand raised. Yes, I, I wanted to just um, provide a little clarification. There is, the, there is the group here where it says items can be completed within the budget or with internal staff. So one of the items that I have consistently heard from this board is that we should be continue, continually looking at our contractual services and identifying those things that can be done with internal staff and do those things with internal staff rather than spending money on contractual services. And I think this category with these three items, we are not saying that we're not going to do, develop the career pathways. We're not saying that we're not gonna develop the language access plan. What we are saying is we are going to use internal staff to do those rather than contracting that work out. Thank you, Director Wiseman, for that clarification. Are there any other comments from commissioners? I'm not seeing any. Um, it does sound to me as though uh, there are some uh, items that some commissioners would like to uh, keep. Um, and uh, certainly some that, as Director Wiseman said, could be completed um, within current budget levels. Um, I'm, I'm inclined uh, to um, really look at all or none unless we have a, a certain amount of um, clear guidance from other commissioners on, on this. I'm sensitive to Commissioner Bourne's comments. Uh, I don't know if they're uh, completely uh, connected conversations, um, uh, just looking at this fund specifically, uh, excess fund balance uh, specifically. Um, but I know that many of these commissioners have worked hard to, to get allocated in the first place. Um, and, and I do see how, especially the, 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 the work that has not started, the pieces that are allocating money for jobs uh, could could certainly be a for us to continue to, to support. Um, um, my my thought is that if there if there are items that can be completed with within budget or with internal staff, it seems to me that those could easily be uh, returned. Um, but unless I'm hearing anything additional, I'm not hearing a lot of uh, guidance on strong feelings on other pieces that should be returned. So I'm hearing anything else from folks. Doesn't sound like it. Um, okay. Well, I will uh, we'll have to move on here. Um, thank you for those who weighed in. Um, and uh, we'll move on now to 
uh, revenue sources and risk conversation. Um, and Director Wiseman, oh, Commissioner Bourne has now a uh, comment. Thank you, President Cogill. I, I guess I just want to echo echo your solicitation for feedback right now. Uh, this is some of the hardest conversation. This is probably the, I haven't had conversations this difficult since I think 2010 when we looked at, um, when we looked at a contraction for loss of LGA there. Um, this is what we're elected to do and we're gonna find our calendar. There's going to be a slate of cuts coming up at our next meeting, if I'm understanding your intent, President Cogill, now is the time to give input. And the amount of silence that I heard last night and the amount of silence that I'm hearing tonight is just, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we all choose to weigh in a little bit more on this. Well, thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, I uh, hope that I can have conversations with folks, uh, I guess, moving forward, but um, I'm seeing no other hands, so I will uh, turn it over to Director Wiseman to move forward with our revenue sources and economic risks discussion. Okay. Um, I think Al is speaking, but his, Al, you're um, muted. <laughs> I am. Thank you for uh, alerting me to that. Um, thank you, President Cogill and Commissioners. I appreciate that. Um, so now what we're going to do is we'll start shifting back uh, to our 2021 uh, budget discussion. Uh, and so Director Weissman um, is going to present the MPRB's uh, various revenue sources and the risks uh, to those revenues uh, due to COVID-19 or the pandemic and also, of course, around the uh, ec economic recession. So with that, I will turn it over to Director Weitzman to walk us through those. Thank you, President Cogill and commissioners. So I'm gonna start with a couple of slides that I showed yesterday. Um, first of all, for our 2020 budget in our general funds, our major revenue source is property taxes at 75%. Fees, fines, and other revenues is 14%, and LGA is 11%. If you look at the non-property tax revenues, you'll see the um, further breakdown where user fees, charges for services, and rental charges make up the largest piece of the other revenue pie. So this is a chart uh, that was presented to this board last year. Uh, the chart had these first four um, rows, and I've now added uh, this final row. Um, it's it's uh, too bad that we're you know it's 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 too bad that we're here. Um, I did talk through this last year, and a lot of this. I had on here was based on economic conditions, based on dependent on economic conditions, dependent on economic conditions. And now going into 2021, we definitely have um, a great risk associated with our budget around the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic recession that we are currently experiencing and how long that recession may last. So I'm gonna go through each prop, uh, revenue type. Property taxes, which is our most sustainable source of funds, but also the largest piece. Uh, the risks going into the 2021 budget really around what should be our maximum property tax levy at, and what are the pressures that this board um, will have when considering the maximum property tax levy. Uh, what is the pressure that's felt by the property owners during tough economic times? Uh, might um, sway you to levy a maximum that is lower than our current service level. 
And then also, again, as we are looking at 2020, what will the property tax collection rate actually be? How many delinquent taxes uh, will there be? How large will that grow over time? You eventually uh, receive that property tax money um, over time, it comes back, but it has an initial impact uh, to your budget and to your forecasting. Fees and charges, uh, based on park, it's dependent on park usership. Um, never did I imagine that it was going to be based on um, what is allowed and what's not allowed due to a pandemic and due to uh, service level changes based on stay at home orders and social distancing requirements. But we quickly learned um, how volatile that revenue stream and source is during this uncertain time. Next column is city funding. We have um, ordinances that uh, direct our city funding. Uh, we, the city is experiencing unprecedented losses in revenues during, uh, uh, due to the COVID pandemic and the economic recession, local sales taxes, parking, state aid, all of which can impact the amounts that the city commits to the MPRB. And so we need to um, have those discussions with the city, uh, talk about um, their commitment to the commons, talk about their commitment to the 20 year neighborhood park plan, um, but definitely keeping an eye on, um, eye on those type of revenues. State funding, the legislative um, type of funding. Again, with decreases to the state income taxes, gas taxes, sales taxes, um, the large deficit that the state is facing, that can impact the amount of money, again, that's provided to the park board. We are provided money through local government aid. We're provided money through operations and maintenance, lottery and lua funds. Um, Metropolitan Politan Council bonds, legacy funds, all of those funding sources can be impacted based on, um, based on these conditions. And then finally, grants and donations. That's really dependent on funders and the economic recession is impacting their ability to hold their fundraisers, their ability to raise money. Um, so that will impact what is available to the MPRB and it potentially could change the whole grant and the donation landscape. So there's a lot of risk to our funding, our uh, revenue sources as we enter our 2021 budget conversation. Are there any questions on this before we move on? Commissioners, not seeing any questions. Um, my question at this point is, have we had discussions with the Parks Foundation about anything they're seeing regarding their funding landscape? Like at this point, is there anything to inform that? Um, or are we just kind of imagining that we're preparing for this eventuality or has the Parks Foundation or any other of our partners indicated anything that they're seeing so far? Uh, President Cogill and commissioners, um, what I do know, and I can't fully speak, of course, for the foundation, but what I do know is that uh, the foundation and the board is looking for, uh, looking, toward, uh, looking into the future, understanding the same challenges um, that really every organization is going through and philanthropic organization. So what they're doing is they're starting to rethink and reimagine um, the next years on, on what the board will kind of campaign around. And so whether it could be the River First project still that exists, uh, possibility of um, our park system and how we look at our um, facilities as incubators of imagination and creation, uh, potentially have talked about um, 
making that make sure the park board is the most sustainable and and um, uh, you know looking at our carbon footprint and looking at uh, the idea about sustainability and our ecology so um, they're they're doing that now the board is working through that now um, again um, they're just in the beginning um, phases of this and I know that uh, uh, the executive director, executive director Tom Evers can give more uh, context around that of course but um, I know that the board, the foundation, is looking towards the future and how they can be sustainable and how they can be impactful uh, to the city of Minneapolis and uh, our park visitors. Thank you, Superintendent, for that. Uh, Commissioner Forney. Um, I, I just want to make sure I understood your, your um, uh, question, uh, President Coquille. Are you talking about what they, their view is of the potential of funding uh, a fundraising is that more what you were asking yeah what the fundraising landscape is uh, and, go ahead and how it's shifting um yeah i don't think there was any perspective of that but they were pleased they did do a, um uh whatever it's called anyway uh, one of the fundraisers that just recently what's it called anyway um and we're very very pleased in the response so i think that there still is an appetite there um but you know you know how the economy is going to um impact um uh, philanthropy is an unknown that um was expressed thank you thank you commissioner forney that's helpful Not seeing any other questions at this point, you can continue, Director Wiseman. All right. Um, thank you, President Cogill and uh, commissioners. Um, so as we, so what's going to happen now is that Director Wiseman is now going to walk us through a uh, current um, service level discussion. Uh, and after, um, we'll be asking, of course, the board, the commissioners to provide input around what we should be what we should consider uh when developing the mprb current service level budget for 2021 uh so with that i'm going to turn this over to uh director weissman to walk us through uh the current service uh, level discussion thank you so as we plan for the 2021 budget we are entering the budget price process in the midst of a health and economic crisis. I've heard words like uncertain, unstable, unstable, and unpredictable that describe our current condition with unknowns around the pandemic duration, how long social distancing requirements, um, how long, if we will have, or when we will have more stay at home orders, our continued revenue shortfalls, and again, the economic recession. As we look at our current service level, we have to understand the impact to the program services, events, and park use that this pandemic is having on our system. And then we need to refine our levels of service based on those changes. This is a chart that, um, that I provided at yesterday's uh, presentation. This is a current service level look as if the pandemic and the recession were not happening. So this is, this is what we would need to provide our current service levels um, in 2021. Uh, so the same level of service that we used to build 2020, we would use to build 2021. Um, again, we're showing the planned rejection, reduction in local government aid that we currently know about. And increases to full-time and part-time wages is based on the actual contract. Um, union contracts, so there's no wage freezes built in. Um, insurance is calculated at a 5% increase. All of these things. If all of this was in place, we would need to levy a maximum property tax levy increase of 6.3% in the general fund 
for 2021. When you start to look at the potential impact of COVID on our current service level and the impact of the recession, and if you look at a combined, you see varying levels of um, budget gaps with a worst case scenario point that we look at of $6.1 million as a deficit that we would be going into our 2021 budget process um, with. So it will require extremely difficult conversations um, and deliberations by both uh, staff and the executive team and the board uh, to plan for uh, this potential. So one of one of uh, the conversations that I wanted to have with this board is um, potentially maybe developing two budgets for 2021 be just because of all the unknowns that are happening uh, with the pandemic and with the recession. And you know, be prepared for the worst case scenario, but maybe. Um, work on, you know, another scenario at the same time so that when we get closer to budget adoption, we are prepared to have those conversations and discussions um, when, um, when more is known. Before I open it up to conversation, I do want to talk about our system expansion. So during a this troubling time and during an economic recession, um, we have to deal with the expansion of our system. These are things that have already been committed to. These are things that are uh, major um, acquisitions and construction that are happening and there's costs associated with them. And during last year's budget, we were building some of those um, operational costs into our current service level. Obviously for 2021 with the COVID pandemic, um, we don't feel that um, there's an ability to build that into our current service level this year. We would first um, want to analyze and adjust and change uh, to support the needs of these new or um, areas based on the current economic climate and the COVID service levels uh, and readjust them during the current pandemic time. We, that would allow for data and analytics to be collected and utilized and we would um, be able to request future phase in operational increases but recognize that 2021 may not be the time to continue um, that part of the process. So I will stop here and um, ask for what the commissioners um, are thinking about current service level. Thank you, Director Weisman. Are there questions or comments and ideas about current service level. Commissioner Musich. Thank you very much, President Kogel. Um, I've been thinking about this quite a bit and I think we need to, to really seriously think about what sort of um, temporary changes we can make to what we're setting aside in terms of land acquisition and uh, items of that nature that are going to not only increase the amount of operational costs for the organization, but that are really future thinking in terms of um, expenditures when we really want to keep as many people employed as we can during this time and offer as many services as we can to people that really would struggle to pay to have experiences um, in the private sector. So <laughs> I don't know exactly 
how much of the budget beyond just the land acquisition reserve is made up of expenses of that variety, but we may want to look at those as being things that we would remove from our 2021 budget um, and then consider again in future years to allow us to um, keep the amount of additional cost that we're asking taxpayers to pick up smaller um, for this, this budget year. Uh, I anticipate, I mean, I would love to see us be able to ask for this, a similar amount of funding to keep our current level of service in place, uh, but I just, I don't see those being entirely realistic this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Are there any other commissioners who would like to provide comments? Um, the more specific, the better. Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, President Colgill. Um, Dr. Wiseman, I, I, I think I missed when you were explaining the different columns on this chart. So, so 6.3 is our projected after it was adjusted for what we were anticipating losing in LGA. Are, are these, are these recessions, these 0.68, the, this 0.68 number, is that what we're, is that what we're expecting the net is if we have a 6.3% levy increase based on the smaller property tax base? Or am I to or did I totally miss what you were saying there? President Cogill and Commissioner Bourne. So um, what I am referring to as a recession um, consideration would be if uh, if we received a zero percent property tax levy increase in 2021. So um, so that's what that is reflecting. So you'll see that um, 71 million of property taxes is reduced to 67 million 67.4, which creates um, a larger deficit that we have to work with. Um, so anything between zero and 6.3 uh, would give us some other uh, number as a gap, but we are estimating that we will have a gap um, because of COVID related um, impacts as well that we would have a gap to deal with even if we did the 6.3% property tax levy increase for next year. So so I think I understand recession and combined columns. So so wait under that um, the horizontal rows the very first line that says general fund property tax levy increase Six three, then it goes to 0.68 and 0.68. That 0.68 is what we would realize if we levied a zero percent increase because just the tax base would go up. President Colgill and Commissioner Bourne, uh, it'll be a little bit clearer when we get down to the maximum property tax levy increase. Um, in, 2000 and in 2021, we are at, um, forecasting a reduction in our tree preservation and reforestation levy. And so with the combined, with the combined levies being zero, it gives us a little bit of money in the general fund, if that makes sense. I think it makes sense and I trust you that it will get clearer as we go forward. Um, I don't think I have an appetite in, for something that is pretty likely, we're probably, we're very likely going into a recession. 
Um, I don't know if I have an appetite for 6.3%. Um, I think we've a lot of times used rhetoric about people losing their homes around property taxes, but at this point, I think people are gonna be losing. This might be another 2008 level recession for folks. So I don't know if I have an appetite for 6.3. Thank you for weighing in, Commissioner Bourne. Are there any other commissioners who have thoughts or comments or additional questions about the projections here? Any other commissioners? Commissioner Musich for the second time. Thank you, President Kogel. Maybe it would help if you elaborated on what sort of guidance you're looking for. Are you looking for specific areas of the budget that people would like to see us examining in terms of um, cutting things? Are you looking for a different property tax levy percentage number from folks? Like, what what specifically are you asking us for? Because I think the question you're asking is a bit open-ended, and that's probably why you're getting mm -hmm. a lot of silence. Um, President Kogel and Commissioner Mimusich, I appreciate you asking that question. Um, I think that my, my number one driver for the current service level uh, was to get a sense that um, when we in past years have built things into our current service level, um, the expansion, uh, some of our assets, around youth investment and other and other items like that. I, I was looking for consensus from the board that we shouldn't be building any of those additional things um, into our current service levels at this point. When we get to the conversation about the 2021 um, budget framework, that is where I will be um, wanting a lot of input around kind of guidance on the, you know, the structure of our budget process and what um, make sure that we're covering everything um, that you want us to be looking at, um, you want us to be looking at. So I think we're going to continue to have conversations throughout the night. But for the current service level, it was mostly of what kind of things or should we include or should we not include in our current service level? Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So hopefully now folks might have um, information I'd like to share with you. Thank you, Commissioner Musich, for that question. Uh, I'm not seeing any other hands. I will say um, I have a question about some of this. I'm wondering, uh, so, I'm just looking at these spreadsheets. The, the difference between the COVID-19 and the, the current estimated 2021 budget um, is just in our, our revenues, essentially, right? Um, it's, it, so current service level is referring to what we were doing or what we were hoping or planning to do pre-COVID. It's not what is actually current, it's that, that's maybe a misnomer. Is that correct? Because our current level is already radically shifted. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so, so I guess that, that's the question that I have is, is well, I mean, it's, it's soon here, but we, we kind of need to be thinking about what is current service level for 2021 is not suddenly getting back up to what we were doing pre-COVID. It's a new thing. I, th I think I think it's a, it should be a new thing, and President, it has to take into account where we're at now. Yep, President Colgill and Commissioners, I really appreciate um, that input, and it is something that I uh, forgot to say again in response to Commissioner Musich. Uh, it, Jennifer, if you go back up to slide 16, um, really for. For current service level, we do need to understand the impacts of COVID to our services 
and then refine and redefine what our service levels will be based on this new um, this new environment that we are living in. So when we get to the framework conversation, we will start having some conversations framing um, what are the board's commitment, what's the board's commitment um, when we are looking at, at doing this and refining this. And as we refine this, we may come to understand that um, that we don't, you know, we don't go, we don't need a 6.3% property tax levy increase, um, especially if we put in a wage freeze and that wage freeze goes to the end of uh, 2021. There will be a different property tax levy answer um, based on some of those adjustments that we make and decisions that this board makes and um, as we move forward looking at our structures and and what is needed for the service level um, that we will be providing in 2021. Thank you. We have Deputy, Deputy Superintendent Ringgold had her hand raised and then I'll go to Commissioner Forney. Thank you, President Cogill. I think maybe one additional piece that I would add is oops, thinking about the difference between a COVID impact and a recession impact is that this COVID-19 impact shows you based on people's ability to pay for us to be able to do programs that people would be paying for essentially what the impact would be, but that COVID-19 impact doesn't actually provide any relief to the property owner in and of itself. So you have to include both some element of the recession column as well as some element of the COVID-19 column in order to, on one hand, assume that we will be, we'll have some reduction in programs that would be a fee-for fee -for program as well as provide some relief to property owners. You'd have to do some combination of both. Thank you. Commissioner Forney. Um, yes, uh, uh, thank you, uh, President Cogill. Um, thank you, Julie, uh, Director Wiseman, for refine and define, I think really kind of nails it all. Um, I mean, my first response is um, that um, due to COVID, our employees to me are the most fundamental. But being that we have a park system, to me the functionality, the 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 um, um, service um, delivery and everything to me is what we are fundamentally about. Um, so I, I, that description, um, uh, Deputy Superintendent um, Ringel about the difference between the COVID and the recession, I think is really, really um, right at the heart of what, um, <laughs> it's hard for all of us to get our minds around. I mean, there's a part of me that thinks that the park on land acquisition, you know, is fundamental to what we are about. Um, and um, would like to very much to keep that. But as I say, there is uh, um, a driver in me that the, um, uh, wages and fringe are, are more important. Could you explain a little bit more about the other expenditures? Um, that's a pretty large number and just a little bit better definition of what those are. Sure, the other expenditures, I'm sorry, President Cogill and Commissioner Forney, the other expenditure line is everything, everything non-employee related. So material and supplies, contractual services, utilities, rental fees, uh, contractual, yeah, everything legal, our legal costs. Okay. And that, you know, not knowing what all of that is, but yes, of course, it's all very fundamental types of things. Um, there might be an opportunity there. Um, uh, 
Thank you, Commissioner Forney. Any other commissioners want to weigh in uh, on uh, what is included within this current service level um, relative to items like our youth uh, youth investment priority? Um, in addition, I think Commissioner Paporni brought up a good point regarding our parkland acquisition reserve. Are there any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner French. Uh, is there a breakdown on how much uh, when we're talking when we're talking about uh, wages? Is there a breakdown between uh, supervisors and frontline staff? I, I, how much are we spending on on management, and how much are we spending on folks who are actually out in the field? President Cogill and Commissioner French, um, I do not have that breakdown. That's something that uh, we would have to uh, calculate and provide uh, during the budget process. How, how long would it take for me to get that information? Uh, it would take staff time to calculate it because it's not something that is kept um, you know, it's not kept in separate, so it's, it would be getting the information out each of the budget areas, so it, it would take a little bit of time. Um, okay. Without talking to my staff, I can't, I, I don't want to um, we can talk them online. to a specific time frame. We can talk offline about that, All but right. I'm, I'm, I would just be really curious about if, it, like, any decisions we would make in the future. Just, I'm just curious about what, what, where the money's been spent at when we talk about uh, wages. Uh, thank right. you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, President Cole. Thank you, Commissioner French, for weighing in on that. Appreciate it. Um, I'm seeing no other hands raised uh, right now. Uh, I the, the last piece I would say is that overall, uh, the, the other expenditures point looks like some we could explore some cuts but also I you know the, the top priority of the board was invest in youth and yet within our current service level budgeting we're still budgeting this three hundred fifteen thousand dollars for parkland acquisition um, I, I find that hard to uh, to balance out with with what the priorities stated with of this board have been and um, and wh and where we're going given the fact that that we are going to be seeing some substantial cuts in the in the coming year um, seeing no other comments I think we can move on in the discussion and our next Focus area here is um, property tax levy. Yes, thank you, President Cogill and Commissioners. Um, so the next part um, of our agenda um, is going to be around the maximum maximum property tax levy discussion. Um, Director Weissman, of course, will provide an overview of property taxes uh, for the city of Minneapolis. And then what we'll do is we'll have a discussion uh, with commissioners about your thoughts around what the MPRB's maximum property tax levy request should be for 2021. So with that, I will turn this over to Director Weissman. Thank you, President Kogel and Commissioners. I'm going to start just with a little bit of background. The Board of Estimate and Taxation is the body that um, sets the maximum property tax levy. It was created in 1919 by uh, the state legislator, Leitcher. There is a membership of six, the mayor or a designee, the city council president, the chairperson of the Ways and Means Budget Committee, a Park and Recreation Board Commissioner, and then two members that are elected citywide. As required by state law, the Board of Estimate and Taxation sets the maximum property tax levy for the city of Minneapolis 
the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, the Municipal Building Commission, and the Public Housing Authority. The board is also entrusted to incur indebtedness for the municipal purposes on request of the city council. In 2020, the city of Minneapolis as a whole had a 6.95% um, increase in property taxes over 20, 2019. The Minneapolis Park Board's combined levy increase was 5.73%. The Park Board is 18.6% of the total city tax high. And then if you look at all jurisdictions for property taxes, uh, the Park Board is eight cents um, on every dollar when you look at all of the taxing jurisdictions. Last year we had dropped to seven cents on a dollar uh, we're back up to eight cents on the dollar because the school um, levy decreased. There are several factors that uh, change or that affect the impact that a property tax levy increase has on a particular property owner the tax base composition within the property classification. So any change between uh, the classifications of residential, commercial, or um, rental properties, the tax rate for the jurisdiction, the growth or decline in the values of the property within the jurisdiction, the properties placed in tax increment financing districts or coming out of tax increment financing districts, and then improvements to a property. So in 2020, the 6.95% property tax levy increase impacted property owners between 4.7% as a low up to 13.5% for apartments um, as a high based on all those varying factors. When we look at a maximum property tax levy options for 2021, um, I have included the COVID-19 impacts to show the deficits um, of a potential um, at different levels. So the first one shows the 6.3% property tax levy increase for the general fund. It shows the decrease for the tree preservation and reforestation fund. So a combined levy increase of 5.5% would um, provide us with the current service level amount without um, COVID impact. Factoring in COVID impact, we would have a $2.4 million deficit at a 5.5% tax increase. If we reduced our request to 4%, um, it would equate to a 4.8% increase to our general fund. The decrease in the tree preservation um, fund would give us an overall increase of 4%. Our budget gap would be 3.4 million. And then again, at a 0% property tax levy increase, uh, it gives us a very slight increase in the general fund due to the fact that the tree preservation and forestation fund is going down. Um, and we would have a $6.1 million deficit going into our budget development. So at this point, I will open it up to commissioners and um, I know this is a tough conversation to have without having a conversation around what would be cut or what wouldn't be cut. But, um, you know, unfortunately, when we start having conversations with the mayor and conversations with the BET, this is going to be the number one talking point. What is the board thinking? What is the board feeling? 
uh, what direction potentially is this board going to take um, around property taxes, understanding that it will mean budget reductions in 2021, which we will have to work through during our budget process. Thank you, Director Wiseman, for that overview. Um, I think the, the ask here is pretty clear. We have a few example uh, levels here. Um, like to hear from commissioners uh, what their approach is and what their initial uh, thoughts are around uh, property tax levy as we move into this budgeting process. So with that, I will open it up to commissioners for comment. Commissioner French. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, keep beating the same nail. Uh, we are in, you know, times that aren't normal, uh, and, and we have to really be, uh, conscious of that. You know, a year ago we had a, a booming economy, job market was pretty good. Um, uh, and we, we wanted to make different decisions and different choices about, <clears throat> What our, what our tax levy would be. I think th this year it would be a good time to be a little bit more frugal and, and think about the folks who actually have to pay this levy. Uh, we're we're going to make some really tough decisions over the next couple of months. And uh, we need the people of Minneapolis to help us make those decisions. And we're asking them to pay for those decisions that we're going to be making. And, and so... I, I would just want federal commissioners to really think about how much money we're going to ask for the people of Minneapolis to actually pay for something today. You know, it's COVID, right? It's these, these are just this is just collateral damage from a pandemic. So I was just yeah. I'm done. Thank you, thank you, President Carlo. Thank you, Commissioner French. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Musich. Thank you, President Kogel. Uh, a 0% property tax increase looks incredibly painful, uh, I, but so does us asking the people of Minneapolis to increase their property taxes 6.3 percent uh so i i feel slightly more comfortable with the the four percent range or the three to four percent range i think i can rationalize um and explain to my constituents i don't think a service level um change to maintain the service level is is something that i would be able to support. Um, I'm, I would hope that we don't have to go to no levy increase because um, I feel like that would severely impact our ability to continue the work that we're doing right now. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Severson. Uh, thank you, President Cogill. Uh, I, I too have reservations about an increase uh, or even 4% or even 3% uh, drastically different times than where we were last year or the previous year. Um, I think we need to be an ally to the taxpayers and uh, continue to provide services and look back at ourselves to see what we can better uh, and, and not hit the pocketbooks of uh, the very uh, people that are going to be struggling the most, particularly in the communities that I represent. So I would be uh, pretty reserved on on a on a um, on an increase. I'd, I'd just be very concerned about that. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Severson. Uh, Commissioner uh, Bourne. Thank you, President Kogel. Um, Director Wiseman, can you remind me? Was it twenty? 11 that 
we passed a 0% levy increase for 2010. Do you remember? Director Wiseman? I'm here. I was just looking it up real quick. Sorry. I think uh, I think President, President Cogill, Commissioner Bourne, we levied a 0% property tax levy in 2012. And for our general fund, we also levied a 0% property tax levy in 2014. Okay. The and that was the year that the tree levy um, started. Right. So we, so we used, yep. So we had, uh, I, uh, I, I hate to sound like the old person just kind of talking about the old days, but we, we had a lot of difficult conversations during those zero percentage years. Um, and at the time, uh, my colleagues and I were able to, and I think some of us that are on the board now, were able to increase the services that we cared about in in a zero percent in zero percent years. Um, and in those zero percent years, it's less than inflation, so it is a real cut, and it's it's a very hard conversation. Um, in, in, and how we got around that was we we really took a deep dive into administration and clipboards versus lawnmowers and shovels and whistles for coaches. And we were able to, we were really able to cut a lot of administration. Um, that I don't think it's back at the same level that, that it was pre those 0% years, but that administration level has crept and crept and crept and we do have we we've got some room even in a zero percent year i believe we have some room to expand the services for youth that this board has all proclaimed that we care about um and still protect the taxpayers of minneapolis uh in in boom times i will be the first one to advocate for a property tax increase which i have the last several years uh but i think I think that there's a way to expand the things that we care about and find some pretty significant cost savings by sharpening our pencils and going in and looking at the uh, looking at the administration. So I'm all for funding kids and lawnmowers, and I think there's a lot of other things that we do that aren't kids and lawnmowers. Thank you, President Cogill. Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Commissioner Forney followed by Vice President Vita. Thank you, President uh, Cogill. Um, I'm heartened by the fact of how important our parks have been in this time of, of the pandemic. Um, and, and <laughs> I mean, so many people who are out of state that are friends of mine commenting about, my gosh, you guys are continually in the news. And so I, I feel that there is a, a still a palette for us to um, provide the services that we have been. Um, I think to be prudent though, we should be looking at um, a reduction. Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna say to look for splitting it, um, you know, it's with whatever that would be 3.15. It's an arbitrary amount, but I, I just feel that um, our community really relies on our park system and the services that um, we currently have been providing. And so that's my take on it. Thank you, Commissioner Forney, Vice President Vita. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, I too am not a fan of us asking taxpayers to pay more at this time. I do want us to uh, try to maintain our current service levels. I also, again, I keep advocating for us to, you know, have someone that could potentially look at opportunities for us to re, uh, find funding in other places. I, I mean, I think like 
there may be some opportunities coming up for us to find funding on federal level to figure out some of these uh, programs for youth. You know, I, I agree with other commissioners that we have made a commitment to youth. And I think that, again, we should continue to keep looking at other options uh, for doing that and not just focusing on using uh, tax dollars or Minneapolis taxpayers' dollars for that. And that's it for me. Thank you, Vice President. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? I'm not, not seeing many. Um, well, I, I appreciate that. I, I too am sensitive to the uh, double-edged sword here, uh, and certainly the 6.3% uh, levy uh, requests would be. Uh, and I think uh, at this time, given what we do know and all the unknowns and undue burden on our taxpayers. Um, I also think on the other end, a 0% increase uh, is a substantial uh, hit to the men and women that take care of this system. Um, and I, I think something closer to the middle, I heard uh, for for the top level, less than three from another uh, commissioner. Uh, that's what I'm hearing right now is something a little less than four um, as being a good spot. Um, I'm not seeing anybody else looking to weigh in at this point. Um, there are any other comments, please, uh, please do uh, speak up, but uh, appreciate everybody weighing in. Commissioner French. Uh, Director Wiseman, um, what would what, what what would be the best best case scenario? What, what would be what would be a good increase for you? And the worst case scenario, what would be? Are you prepared to answer that question, or or just I, I, be real general? You don't have to like, you know, hit the nail on the head. I'm just just trying to get a just trying to get a, a reference point on on, on either. You know what? What kind? What the outcome? What the outcomes could be? So, President Cogill and Commissioner French, um, I don't know if I can really answer that <laughs> question. I have a pretty good. I just, I, I really feel. I mean, I, I appreciate all of the feedback that everyone just gave. Um, I know that this is not an easy decision uh, as elected officials. Um, I understand that we are in um, unprecedented, or I hate the word that use that word because everybody uses it, but we are, we are definitely in the midst of something that we have never experienced before and, we, and there are just so many unknowns associated with it. Um, so hearing that you are all cautionary uh, is, you know, is being heard, but understand that, you know, at 4% property tax levy increase, we're gonna be having a difficult conversation. At a 3% property tax levy increase, we're gonna have an even more difficult conversation. Uh, and if this board so chooses to do a maximum property tax levy of 0%, um, those are gonna be some very hard conversations and decisions that we're gonna need to make. I think the superintendent and the executive team and all of us in finance understand that we're headed into a very tough budget year. Um, and we are prepared to help this board in, in every way we can to make educated decisions on how we get to a balanced 2021 budget. Thank, thank you, Director Wiseman. That was, that was helpful. I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner French. Are there other questions? I'm not seeing any right now. Thank you, commissioners, for weighing in on the subject. Um, I think we can 
move on uh, here to our 2021 uh, budget framework and direction. Uh, thank you, uh, President Cogill and commissioners. That was, was a good discussion. Um, so our final conversation um, of the evening is the presentation on the, um, the draft for the 2021 budget framework. Um, and so just as you know, the board considered and adopted the 2020 budget framework to guide um, the MPRB and its response to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we're presenting this draft um, for the board to consider and use it as a guide for the 2021 um, budget development. Um, Director Weissman will present the, um, the draft for the 2021 uh, budget framework, and then we will have um, mm -hmm. time for uh, all of you commissioners to provide input to the framework that's being presented uh, tonight. So uh, with that, I will now turn over to Director Weissman to uh, present the framework uh, to you, to the commissioners. Thank you, President Cogill and commissioners. Jennifer, were you able to switch out the PowerPoint or add the slide? Director Wiseman, um, I could do that now. I'm gonna have to stop screen sharing and maybe folks, if they need to run to the bathroom, President Cogill or something like that, if you want to take just a couple of minutes to let folks stretch, I'd be able to do that. Certainly, we'll take we'll we'll take five minutes here. Okay. Nice. <laughs> President Cogill, are you there? Yep. I'll need you. I, I believe um, at this point it doesn't allow anybody to screen share but you, so I'll need you oh. to, in the security section, allow others to screen share. So the one participant, let's see here. Uh, it says uh, all participants can share. Uh, let's see here. Maybe try it now.
like that's working. Here, let me um, make you the host. Stepped outside for a minute. Is it nice out? It is. It is. It looks pretty nice. I have a view of an alleyway, but even so, it still Stop. looks welcoming. I think I got one of the last uh, brick alleyways in the city. I don't know how many there are, but they're like two blocks of this brick alleyway. So you went to South, right, Jono? Yeah. I worked at South for like two decades, and you know South doesn't have any, have any windows. Yeah, it's that, uh, I don't remember the name of that architect, but the guy who did, did all the prisons and did South. That, is, that's not an urban legend, I always thought. Oh, that's, that's legit. I mean, the third floor is they built afterwards. Yeah. But the first two floors, they, they built in the 70s because it was, they got this guy who was like a, usually built prisons because there was all this concern about like protesters and rioting and stuff. <laughs> so they built this like very brutalist building, I think partly to, in response to that, which is sort of ironic because you think of South as kind of a more of an activist school. But I, th I thought it was just like the super progressive kids who were just like, had this like urban legend going on. Like it was built <laughs> by a prison architect. And I'm like, come on. Hey, come on. I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you knew uh, Ms. Matira. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I heard that from her, so. I've I don't heard know that same rumor about, about uh, North and Franklin. <laughs> Was that? So I've heard the same rumor about North and Franklin. Really? Same architect. Yeah, I could see that. What? Where was the original North, North building? Well, this is the fourth one. The original one was off of about 18th and Emerson or Fremont. Yeah. The original South was downtown. The original, original. Not the, not the one that was on Franklin, but it was the original one downtown Minneapolis. Yeah, I've seen some pictures. It was beautiful. Yeah, the old South building was cool. And then there was the old um, Central and East. Wasn't there an East? Is, or no, West. There was West. Ryan, right, you know about all these places? I know about some of them. So I can tell you what I've read about this, if anyone cares to have me weigh in. Um, the, the school riots that were happening in the 70s are what drove the Minneapolis Public Schools Board to approve the schools being built without windows because they found the shatterproof glass costs to be too high. <laughs> little, little did they know that not being able to see outside probably would make people more likely to riot than uh, <laughs> being able to see nature. But yeah, yeah it's, it's the craziest. Those windows, like you couldn't see out there, frosted glass. Yeah. And now they're now they're sealed where you can't even open them. Like you used to be able to prop them open. Yeah, like yeah, you could. You man, that's yeah, that was messed up. I feel like did that happen the year that I graduated? Was the year that they also put those bumpers on the on the railing so that you couldn't, uh, so you couldn't slide down the railing, huh? And they painted over the rainbows. It was really like, yeah. Sadness. President Kogan? Yes. I believe, um, I believe we are ready. Fantastic. I'll stop reminiscing and we can uh, take that conversation offline. Um, well, we're back to the 2021 budget framework and I'll turn it over to uh, Director Wiseman and the superintendent to, to take us through this. President Kogel and commissioners. Uh, again, this is the draft 2021 budget framework. And just as it is a draft, the reason for uh, switching the presentation is I thought of a new direction that I felt we were missing from this list. So I've added one. Uh, I'm going to walk you through this document before I do that, I want to really apologize to the public that I didn't announce 
that all of the documents that we are going through today are on the public, the Park Board public website at www.minneapolispark.org backslash budget. So all of the materials are there, including this draft 2021 budget framework. So again, the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board is entering the 2021 budget process in the midst of a health and economic crisis. We are uncertain about when the coronavirus pandemic will, will ease and there continues to be instability and unpredictability associated with this uh, crisis. The negative impact to the local and national economies will be felt long after the health crisis subsides, along with social distancing requirements, stay at home orders, stay safe orders that we have now, and current revenue shortfalls, economic impacts resulting from this health crisis are at this point certain to occur. The board understands that in an economic crisis, the MPRB will need to consider all aspects of strategic cost reduction and budget shifts. The following draft 2021 budget framework provides a guide for budget development during this uncertain pandemic and economic time. So the first budget framework is really around uh, strategy and performance measures. So the board remains committed to the 2018 to 2022 strategic direction and performance goals and directs that they be a guide to budget development within a reduced revenue and social distancing environment. So just as the commissioners have discussed um, earlier this evening, uh, the direction around youth investment, the direction around environment, all of those things remain important. Our proposed budget packages must be linked to a strategic direction and a performance goal, and proposed cuts should not increase the disparities in funding between service areas that were intended to be addressed by strategic directions and performance goals. So as we have discussed, in a downward economy and reduced revenue, we need to look to protect our investment in youth um, during uh, this time period. The next budget framework is around racial equity, that we remain committed to racial equity and require the use of the racial equity lens to analyze um, implications of actions throughout the budget process. So again, with budget packages, with budget reductions, we want to make sure that we are not making inequities in our system work worse or creating inequities by any of uh, the actions that we take. The next framework, item C, the board supports employee engagement and would like to ensure that employees' voices are heard and considered during the 2021 budget process. We provide information sessions throughout the budget process and share information with our employees as we have shared with commissioners. But in 2021, we are expanding that engagement by, having, um, by hosting employee budget workshops that will be held in June. And I will be working with Adam Arvidsson with the planning department so that we can hear everyone's voices uh, when we're looking at the tough decisions that we are going to need to make in 2021. And then item D, the board recognizes that service models and corresponding staffing models will need to be reimagined to accommodate the pandemic and economic conditions. So this gets to the heart of some of the conversations you've already had where we need to reshape the MPRB organization structure to meet the service needs. 
We need to define our service delivery and realign staff as needed with the goal of providing the least impact to staff. We need to limit reductions in staff needed to deliver refined services, and we need to focus this through wage freezes and voluntary budgetary leave. We need to consider separation or elimination of some positions that are not aligned with refined service focus through vacancy, severance, buyout, or retirement incentives. And then finally, if deeper position eliminations become necessary, we want to consider attrition first. So that's item D. And then the new item that I added this afternoon is that the board remains committed to the 20-year neighborhood park plan and the continuation of the $10.5 million annual investment in the rehabilitation and capital improvements of our neighborhood park system. The board recognizes the need to remain flexible during periods of recession and understands that capital construction during those periods has the potential to stimulate the economy, result in more attractive bond interest rates, and may drive bids more favorable for capital construction and rehabilitation. So with that, I will open it up um, to commissioners' questions. This is the time to um, make sure that we haven't missed anything uh, within these budget frameworks. It up for a conversation around uh, guidance as we enter a, a budget cycle where we will be looking at reduced revenue and budget reduction. Thank you, Director Wiseman. Are there any comments or questions from commissioners on the framework uh, that was presented? Um, we have item E up here right now, um, but any of the items that were uh, just explained? seeing anybody at this point. Um, I do have a couple of um, questions. Um, if you could go to the equity framework item. Uh, so I, I guess the, the broader question that I have here is, are these oriented towards our our, our our board general board goals is that how these were kind of developed or could you talk about that a little bit so president Kogel and commissioners item a is really a structured around the strategic direction and board goals uh, so that's where we discuss and we'll make sure that we are not creating disparities um, within those areas that this board has remained committed to. So, for example, we want to protect the youth investment, mm -hmm. that the work that this board has done to increase the investment in youth. We want to protect it um, during this type of a budget cycle. The racial equity component is our work towards um, improving uh, racial equity throughout our system. Our racial equity work plan uh, drives a lot of that work. Um, but in the budgeting process, we have included the racial equity lens anytime we have a budget request or a budget impact so that we make sure we are being mindful of what the consequences or unintended consequences would be regarding racial equity. Uh, thank you, that's, that's helpful. 
Um, I, uh, a question or comment that I have then on this equity piece is r racial equity. Um, is there any possibility or thought about uh, adding uh, some kind of economic equity uh, consideration? Um, maybe this can be got through an analysis around racial equity, but I'm thinking about how um, how we approach uh, cuts uh, within the organization. I also think am thinking about uh, where our investments are. As an example, uh, you know, we invest a small amount of money, very small amount of money in our partnership with St. Stephen's. Uh, we have a substantial um, uh, population of people experiencing homelessness who are in or adjacent to our parks uh, throughout the system very often. Right now, that's an issue that's going to continue to be something that uh, we need to, we have a moral obligation to respond to. Um, and I think something that needs to be included in our consideration for the 2021 budget framework, even as we are facing these kinds of cuts. Um, Commissioner Forney. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, thank you, Director Wiseman, for this framework. Um, particularly that last slide, I think that was very powerful. And uh, what um, came to mind for me is how we, um, as the Park Board, how we are an economic driver um, and how uh, critical it is to have um, for us to be cognizant of how it is that we can um, um, raise out of um, uh, the impacts of COVID-19 and, and, and more than likely the recession. Um, so to me, I think that's a really, um, I don't know if we should add that on, but I just feel, you know, for us to be so aware of how um, we have played a hand in, um, in that um, you know, do jobs, do, do just whatever, all of our creations that we've been doing. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is um, that um, somewhere in there, I feel that we should be uh, making a commitment to um, nurture the partnerships that not only we have right now, but also to be seeking out the resources, hopefully um, the federal resources, the state resources that are gonna be coming as a result of uh, the pandemic. Um, I think that is, is so important for us to be um, um, nurturing um, all of those things. I mean, I, um, I hope the stimulus package, the CARES package, whatever, um, is, is something that we can um, um, benefit from. And, and you know, I keep on talking about, it. I, I would like to, to have a jobs core, you know, that's going to be coming out of this and for us to be, um, creating those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Forney. Are there any other co comments or questions from commissioners? Um, be helpful to provide um, some, some amount of response to this uh, so staff can have a sense of uh, how to move forward with our budget development um, in these uncertain times. questions or comments. All right, I'm not seeing any. Do you guys want me to sing a song? All right, Commissioner Musich. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, President Kogel. Um, this budget framework looks good to me. Thank you for all the work you put into it. And I, I especially appreciate that we're trying to stay committed to what we set our goal are as a board. That's that's really nice to see. Fantastic. I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that my colleagues' uh, silence is a fact endorsement of this framework. Thank you, Commissioner Musich, uh, Director, uh, or Deputy Superintendent. Get something to say. 
I was just, um, thank you, uh, President Colgill, Commissioners. I was just going to encourage, sometimes it's also helpful to tell us if there's something in here that you absolutely don't like and that you absolutely would um, be disappointed if we spent any time working working in that particular area. So we commonly think of this as what do we do like, but it's also helpful to say what you don't like. So if there's something in there that you just couldn't live with um, as something that would be part of a framework, that would be helpful to know. Thank you, Deputy Superintendent. Uh, Vice President Vita. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, this framework looks good to me as well. I would just ask that uh, staff is okay with us having a little time to process and maybe reach back out in the next couple days or so, early next week. Um, it's just really hard for me to concentrate at home. <laughs> Two nights in a row, it's been a long week. So, I, and I process like after the fact. So if there's opportunity for me to get feedback uh, maybe early next week, that would be greatly appreciated. But what I've uh, heard and what I'm looking at so far tonight, it does look pretty good. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, Vice President. All right, seeing no other comments from commissioners, uh, thank you uh, for uh, presenting the budget framework, Director Wiseman. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, again for this entire presentation. Um, at this time, I don't know if there are any other general comments or questions from commissioners uh, before we end uh, this meeting this evening. Um, not seeing any. Uh, yes, Commissioner French. I just want to just uh, kind of expand on what I was talking about earlier and just I want all the commissioners to really think about the people who work in our parks on a day-to-day -day basis and impact the kids and the old folks and the young folks and the middle-aged folks who come in our parks to hang out and uh, those are the people who are are, are going to be mostly affected by some of the decisions that we're going to be making so I want people to have those folks in their mind when when they're coming up with suggestions and, and coming up with ideas on how we can make our park system uh, survivable throughout COVID. So just just wanted to uh, get that fact home. Okay, thank, thank you for all your work, uh, Director Wiseman and everybody else on staff. Thank you for all the work that you're doing in, in, in such trying times right now. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner French. Right. Oh, seeing no other uh, comments or questions from commissioners, uh, here we do have the uh, um, link to the budget. Uh, and I'm assuming that's where all of the information presented here tonight will be provided. I'll, I'll turn it back over to the superintendent, though, to close. Sure. Yeah, thank you, thank you, President Cogill and commissioners. Um, I really want to thank you for the for the time that we spent the last two days. Um, I know it's a lot of information, and uh, I know there's some time to um, to digest the information. And and we are obvious, obviously we're always available, and and we look forward to your input, to your uh, suggestions. And like uh, Deputy Superintendent Ringle said, if there's something that you don't like, let us know. Um, we again are really grateful and thankful for the time we spent the last couple of days um i also want to acknowledge i know that this is there's a tough road ahead this is a um, uh, very difficult and hard work and um and this work will be done over the next couple of months and we will work together and uh, and, and make some hard choices but we are committed to providing the services to um, the residents of minneapolis and continue the great work that we do within park and recreation and uh, this outstanding board that we have and the talented staff and the people that are on the front lines every day doing the hard work. And uh, uh, I'm grateful for um, also, of course, Director Weissman and, and the team that have worked very hard um, to bring this before you today. And I'm grateful for that and the hard work that they have done. So again, I wanna thank staff for their work. Um, and again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's still a beautiful day out. Uh, so get out there and enjoy it. 
and our beautiful park system. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent, uh, and I will just echo those comments. Appreciate everybody taking the time on this beautiful evening. I won't say much more. Get outside uh, safely, I suppose, uh, would be the social distancing. Operative word, please wear your mask. I have a few of them. Um, all right, thank you, everybody, and see you um, next week on Wednesday. President Cobio? Yes. I believe we need a motion to adjourn. That is. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask for the secretary to please take the roll. Has anybody ever had a discussion why we shouldn't adjourn? Oh, <laughs> we have not the Commission of French. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> You're waiting for the roll, I think. President Commissioner Hassan. <laughs> Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Bourne. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner French. Aye. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have eight ayes, one absent. Commissioner, Commissioner French, that here. was your chance oh, to protest. Hey, I'm still here. You're oh, um, it's got, we got Commissioner to Commissioner Hassan. Aye. <laughs> you have nine ayes. We are we are adjourned. There's about two hours of daylight. I'm gonna go.